The next law is the 105-day Expanded Maternity Leave Law or Republic Act No. 11,210. The 105-day Expanded Maternity Leave Law covers all female members of the social security system, government employees, national athletes, and those in the informal economy, whether married or unmarried. Maternity leave can be availed of on occasion of 1. Childbirth, 2. Miscarriage, or 3. Emergency termination of pregnancy. Emergency termination of pregnancy refers to pregnancy loss on or after the 20th week of gestation, including stillbirth. Note the duration of maternity leave. 1. For pregnancy or childbirth. For ordinary employees, it's 105 days with full pay, regardless of whether normal or cesarean delivery. Extendable for 30 days without pay at the option of the employee. For solo parents, it's 120 days. In other words, 105 days plus 15 days with full pay. Two, for miscarriage or emergency termination of pregnancy, it's 60 days with full pay. Maternity leave cannot be deferred. It may be availed of before or after the actual period of delivery in a continuous or uninterrupted manner. However, the postnatal leave shall not be less than 60 days. On allocation of maternity leave credits, the employee may allocate seven days of the maternity leave benefit to the child's father, whether or not the father is married to the female worker. The allocated benefit granted to the child's father is over and above that which is provided under the Paternity Leave Act of 1996. In case of death, absence, or incapacity of the father, a seven-day benefit may be allocated to an alternate caregiver. The alternate caregiver may be a relative within the fourth degree of consanguinity or the current partner of the female worker who shares the same household. The worker shall notify her employer or the head of the government agency of her option to allocate with her application for maternity leave. The father or alternate caregiver, as the case may be, shall notify the employer concerned of his or her availment of the allocated leave and the inclusive dates thereof. On the effect of death or incapacity, if the female worker dies, or becomes permanently incapacitated, the balance of the maternity leave benefit shall accrue to the father of the child or to a qualified caregiver. The qualified caregiver may be a relative within the fourth degree of consanguinity or the current partner of the female worker who share the same household. Is there a limit as to the number of pregnancies or miscarriages in availing the benefits of the law. Maternity leave can be availed of for every instance of pregnancy, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy, regardless of frequency. In case of two overlapping maternity benefit claims, for, for example, a miscarriage or emergency termination of pregnancy after the other or followed by live childbirth, the female member shall be granted maternity benefits for the two contingencies in a consecutive manner. However, the amount of benefit corresponding to the period where there is an overlap shall be deducted from the current uh, maternity benefit claim, and the worker shall be paid only one maternity benefit, regardless of the number of offspring for childbirth or delivery. Note the conditions for availment. One, for members of the social security system, the member must have paid at least three monthly contributions in the 12-month period immediately preceding the semester of her childbirth, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy. Two, for non-members of the social security system, 
female workers who are neither voluntary nor regular members of the social security system shall be governed by Philippine Health Insurance Corporation Circular Number 022-2014 or the Social Health Insurance Coverage and Benefits for Women About to Give Birth. 3. For Women in the Informal Economy and Voluntary Contributors to the Social Security System. Female workers in the informal economy shall be entitled to maternity leave benefits if they have remitted to the Social Security System at least three monthly contributions in the 12-month period immediately preceding the semester of her childbirth, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy. How is the maternity benefit paid? One, for the public sector. The government agency concerned shall pay the maternity benefit in full. The worker shall have the option to be paid in lump sum, payment, or regular payroll. Two, for the private sector, the social security system shall pay the maternity benefit based on the average daily salary credit and the employer shall pay the salary differential, if any. Full payment shall be advanced by the employer within 30 days from filing the application for maternity leave. The social security system shall reimburse the employer 100% of the amount of maternity benefits advanced to the employee upon proof of payment. Remember the instance when female workers are not entitled to salary differentials. Female workers employed by exempt establishments are not entitled to salary differentials. They are entitled only to the maternity benefit under the social security system. Who may be exempted from paying salary differential? The following establishments may be exempted from paying the salary differential. One, Distressed establishments, corporations, or cooperatives. This is when the actual net loss amounts to 25% of the total assets or when they register capital deficiency, that is, negative stockholders' equity immediately preceding the application for exemption. For sole proprietorships or partnerships, this is when the accumulated losses for the two accounting periods immediately preceding the application for exemption amounts to at least 20% of the total invested capital at the beginning of the period under review or when they register capital deficiency, that is, negative net worth as of the last full accounting period immediately preceding the application for exemption. For non-stock or non-profit organizations, this is when the accumulated losses for the last two Full accounting periods immediately preceding the application for exemption amounts to at least 20% of the fund balance or member's contribution at the beginning of the period or when the establishment registers capital deficiency, that is, negative fund balance or member's contribution as of the last full accounting period immediately preceding the application for exemption. As to banks and quasi-banks, when it is under receivership or liquidation as certified by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. 2. Retail or service establishments and other enterprises regularly employing not more than 10 workers regardless of the status except the owners for at least 6 months in any calendar year. 3. Micro-business enterprises that is, those engaged in production, processing, or manufacturing of products or commodities, including agro-processing, trading, and services, whose total assets do not exceed 3 million pesos in accordance with the Barangay Micro-Business Enterprises Act of 2002. 4. Those already providing similar benefits under a collective bargaining agreement, company policy, or practice. Employers who may be exempted are obliged to submit a yearly justification for their continued exemption for approval by the Department of Labor and Employment. Note the procedure 
for availing the maternity leave benefit. One, for government employees, notice of pregnancy should be given by the employee to the head of agency at least 30 days in advance. The prescribed civil service form should be used in applying for maternity leave. The application should be supported by a medical certificate. Two, for employees in the private sector, notice of pregnancy and expected date of childbirth should be given by the employee to her employer immediately upon confirmation of her pregnancy. The employer shall in turn notify the social security system. Failure to notify the employer shall not bar the employee from enjoying the maternity leave benefits subject to guidelines to be prescribed by the social security system. Three, voluntary social security system members, overseas Filipino workers, and those in the informal economy may give notice directly to the social security system. How about the procedure for extension of maternity leave? In case of live childbirth, the employee may ask for 30-day extension of her maternity leave without pay by giving her employer or head of agency a written notice at least 45 days before the end of her maternity leave. Prior notice is not necessary in case of medical emergencies, but subsequent notice should be given to the head of the agency. The extended maternity leave without pay shall not be considered as a gap in the service. Will a pending administrative case of a female worker disallow her from enjoying maternity leave benefits? The worker, whether in the government service or private sector, can still enjoy her maternity leave benefit even if she has a pending administrative case. How about the effect of termination of employment? One, if the childbirth, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy occurs within 15 calendar days from termination of employment, maternity leave shall still be granted because her right thereto has already accrued. Two, if the employee was dismissed without just cause, the employer shall pay her full 105-day maternity benefit for childbirth or the 60-day maternity benefit for miscarriage or emergency termination of pregnancy. This is in addition to the applicable daily cash maternity benefits, which the employee would have received had she not been illegally terminated. Three, if the employee was dismissed for a just cause, she will be entitled only to the maternity benefit under the social security system. The employer is not obliged to pay the salary differential. Finally, note the maternity leave for female national athletes. In the event a national athlete becomes pregnant, she will be referred to the team physician or an accredited physician of the Philippine Sports Commission or an obstetrician gynecologist to determine her fitness to continue training. She will be allowed to participate in all team-related activities unless the physician advises that participation is not medically safe or should be limited. Upon medical advice, she shall go on maternity leave until cleared to return to training. She shall continue receiving her allowance and be entitled to the same benefits while on maternity leave prior to childbirth and up to six months after, unless she can resume sooner as advised by her physician, in which case she will be entitled to the allowance and benefits she had prior to pregnancy, provided that a female national athlete employed in the public sector shall not receive double compensation or benefits. <laughs>